Hey, this is Tyler with T-Jack Survival. I have two interesting things that I want to share with you from Siberia. It's the Yakut and the Kuksa. So, stay tuned. always interested in the Siberian stuff, the Siberian shoes and Siberian cups and knives and stuff because they work well in our environment but there's something that's foreign and it's really interesting for me to find to find out how they use the tools and how they make things or to find ancient technology uh, that existed and usually it, that's because it existed because it works stuff that works oftentimes we we try to reinvent the wheel and fix something that isn't broken we get rid of what was actually a really good idea so in the process of me researching stuff like that i've come up with two really interesting things that i'm sure a lot of you already know about but some of you may not one of them is the yakut which is this knife and one of them is the kuksa now <coughs> the kuksa is basically just a wooden cup okay and the first thing I would ask is why? Why this wooden cup? Well, one, it's got that bushcraft heritage to it. That's just really cool. There's uh, something really interesting to me when it comes to stuff that is handmade. It's just beautiful. And um, my friend Anton up in Canada sent me this. His cousin in Siberia made this. Um, hopefully I'm saying his name right. Forgive me if I slaughtered your name. But the thing that sticks out to me on this Kuxa specifically is how thin and well made it is. I know from trying to make these that it's really hard to get them to the point where this thinness can match. Usually you, you, you get this big thick amount and then you go too deep in here and you poke through or something. Um, so there's techniques that I personally need to learn. But if you look really close, this was actually all done by hand. Um, you can see all of the little carving marks where he's used the tool to cut this out by hand. And then just all of that minute detail, it just screams craftsmanship. That's something that I think is just beautiful. So why a cook set? Well, when you have super hot liquids, it's nice having an ultralight cup that you can pack with you that you can scoop out of stews and stuff and that is insulated. Because of the fact that it's wood, it's just a natural insulator. One thing that's interesting that they have too is this little thumb piece right here, okay? And that gives me the ability to hold on to it, you know, scoop snow, whatever it is that I'm gonna do. I have solid control so that I don't, you know, just lose it or drop the liquid um, because I can't control it. A lot of them you'll see like a, uh, let me feel some heat coming off that fire. A lot of them you'll see like a piece of horn or something right here. And I don't know, that's interesting. But for me, I really like the utilitarian value of just how simple this is. It's finally starting to catch. So, the Yakut. All right, guys, what is this? It is a convex concave knife. Okay, what does that mean? Well, convex is when you're dented in, which we have on this side. Concave is when you're dented out, which we have on this side. Then the first question is why? Well, uh, the legend has it that these were built after the original uh, bone knife, which was basically a femur that's cracked in half, 
and sharpen on one side. And the indigenous people would use that to carve through meat to make everything that they needed to make. And it's, it's just a really unique shape. Well, then you want to know, is there, why, why do we have value in this now? Nowadays, I wish I had a big chunk of meat that I could show you, one of the coolest things that these can do. Um, when you are eating wild game that you've shot, like a deer, an elk, a buffalo, whatever it is, if you're in a survival situation, the way that you preserve that meat is you take a round chunk of meat, you cut it down the center, and then you slim it like this. If you can imagine a piece of paper unrolling on this side, and then you cut on the other side, and you unroll it on the other side. And basically what we do is you take a big chunk of meat, and that unrolling process gives you this long, flat strip. And Native Americans would use a knife that was sharpened on one side and flat on the other, specifically to process game like that. That is the first thing that I thought of that would be valuable when it comes to using a Yakut is to processing large game. Unfortunately, I don't have an elk to skin for you or I would do so. So what I wanted to show you are just some of the basics about how this handles, okay? A lot of the techniques that I use very regularly when cutting wood are what I, it's the chest lever technique. And I wanna show you how it just, it rolls and, and spoons it out. So it doesn't cut straight, it, it kinda curl, curls while it cuts, which is very interesting to me. It kinda has this like skinning property. So if you're using a knife like this and you're just gonna debark something, like it, 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 it just cuts different, it cuts weird, and it's a beautiful thing. It's hard to explain unless I actually hand it to you and let you try it out, but it just curls stuff right off. Um, if I wanted to cut this completely through, I could cut the big deeper stuff, and it's gonna cut just, you know, just like a large, uh, or a, another normal knife. So to explain the way that this cuts is it turns as it cuts and that gives you the ability to create divots and that gives you the ability to skin stuff and the ability to create um, uh, feather sticks. This is not a very dry stick so it's actually a horrible stick to feather stick with and it is frozen hard as a rock. But I can just show you as an example there how that curls. In fact this is super wet. Let's see if we can try this here. Yeah, it just curls right in. I'm noticing that I, as I curl, I have to aim it back down and curl up and then aim it down in order for it to grip because you drive it just a little bit differently. But once you start feeling that, it starts making those feathers a little bit nicer. Okay? And <clears throat> another really interesting thing about the Yakut is it has these big wooden handles. Okay? The reason why they have these are... In, this, in Siberia or if in another place, if you're dealing with water and you drop your knife in the water, it's gonna float. So they have these floating handle um, yakuts that make it so that if you are fjording, you fall in the water or whatever, or you're skinning your fish on the side of the river, you don't permanently lose your knife, which is something that's really cool. Now about the sheath, this sheath is fairly robust it's thicker and heavier and it's traditional so what you can do is just if you've got yourself a uh, a belt of some sort just hang it like that and I personally carry guns a lot in the backcountry and I don't have a, one on me right now but when I do that that means my strong side is taken up and I want access to something to my left side so if I'm wearing like an anorak or something and I'll pull it to access my gun it's really nice to put a belt over the top like this and just throw the knife right there on a cross draw. That way I can just come out and have a knife to access. Something that I really like to mention when you've got a little bit larger knife, um, it's nice to have a little bit of front heavy weight because that gives it the ability to chop. So when you're just, you know, taking some tree limbs and stuff off, you kind of have like an okay sign, just a little bit loose and you're able to chop through it very, very quickly. Part of that is the shape, part of it is the forward weight. And keep in mind, this is maple, so this is a really dense, hard, hard wood, and it's frozen, and we're still busting right through that stuff very quickly with zero blade damage. So that's a value that I see when it comes to the larger knives, is being able to chop away at stuff. 
So this is frozen maple. This stuff is hard as a freaking rock. But as you can see, and it kind of rotates in the hand just a little bit. That's an interesting thing that I'm seeing. But it chops right nice. So you gotta you gotta hold it because as it grabs it, it wants to turn just a little. So straighten it out, do some choppage with it here. Very sharp. It's interesting how well it cuts, and it's kind of hard to show. It uh, kind of just curls, right? Just kind of drives itself. I guess if we wanted to do some feathering here. Oh, that's beautiful. Some amazing feathers as I cut them all off. Look at that. That's awesome. It's interesting how hot maple burns. Hard to show you the way that feels. But, all right guys. So, my assessment on this, I can only say so much because I've only been using it for a few months now. Um, it's different in a very cool way. It, it curls when you cut. I don't know how to say it any, any other way. But as you cut, it helps you to skin things, helps you to debark things. You can cut straight with it. Um, you can baton with it. It's a big, heavy knife. Um, I think that something like this would excel the most in skinning or processing large game. I think this would make an excellent survival knife because it's got a lot of weight. Front heavy weight. It's not a heavy knife at all, but it's got a lot of weight in the front to it. It's got a lot of size. It's something you can use very well with mittens in the mid of winter. You can control it very well. Um, it's not gonna have finger choils and stuff getting in the road. And it feels right with the mittens on. It's kind of an interesting thing. It just feels solid. Like you can, you know, run with it all day long. So if you're looking for a good winter knife, if you're looking for a good game processing knife, if you're looking for a good survival knife, honestly, something you can drop in the water and not lose, I'd highly suggest checking out the Yakuts. And if you're interested in getting one from Antone, or if you're interested in getting a cup, I will leave the links down below. That is some hot, hot steam there. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave the links down below in the discussion box. I will be doing some more uh, videos with this knife in the future as I get a chance to use it more. Hopefully I can get a deer this year. Maybe I can process it with it. So, all right guys, hopefully that's valuable to you. I like to just share things as I find them with you. 
And if it is valuable to you, hit the subscribe button. Uh, leave comments down in the discussion box below. And thank you for watching T-Jack Survival. Drink my tea. Still really hot.